Good evening. Good evening once again. Welcome to 110th video on misconceptions in physics. My name is Ratankar. I teach physics in an international school. And my hobby is to look at problems which students usually have faced during their examinations, understand why they face the problems in their concepts, or what is wrong in understanding these concepts, and finally resolve it. Okay, so towards it, we have been doing so many videos, and off the late, I got a few of these videos, few of these questions, uh, asking for doing problems based on comparison questions. And I have seen personally in my class also that many students make mistakes while they solve problems using comparison. So I'm not going to any new chapter currently, not, I'm not going chapter wise, but instead I'm just going based on the concept wise. That means now what I'm going to do is um, there would be questions wherein the formula U should be same while we need to change some of these parameters and then we used to compare and finally get the answer. Okay, so as an example is, let us say for example, if I take, I just give you an example here. If I take my adapter, I hope you are seeing my adapter. If I say take this adapter, the mass of this adapter or weight, what you call, okay, is seen to be around 40 grams. Now, if I ask you, if suppose, if I add one more weight to it, one more adapter similar to this, what could be its mass? Very simple. You can easily say, see, that if you have two, if you have two adapters, which means mass could be 40 plus 40, 80 grams. But now if I ask you the question in a different way, let us say, for example, if the length and the breadth and the height of it, the thickness, the length, width, everything is being doubled, then in that case of the same material, everything being the same, now what could happen to the adapter? What could be the mass of the adapter change? Now, how do we answer this? Because now I did not say anything about the, the mass of it, but instead I just said, the length is doubled, mass is doubled, height is doubled, which means what? Length is doubled, which means what? The length has now become this much big. What is the, uh, where the width? Width was initially so much, now width has become this much big. And what is the width, uh, the, the height, or maybe what you call it, depth here? The depth is now become so much over here. Depth has become so much over here. Now, if you have an adapter like this, when everything has been doubled, and every dimension is doubled, then how does the adapter change? Or what is the weight of the adapter? How does it change? So such kinds of questions, usually students make a mistake by just looking at only one dimension. They just look at the length is doubled and hence weight is doubled. But they should also understand that the weight of this adapter depends upon the total volume. How does it depend on total volume? Because we know mass is equal to volume multiplied by density. If the density is remaining constant, then volume would be length into breadth into height. So what you need to do is you need to substitute the value of length as two times L value of breadth as two times breadth and value of height to be two times height. So as a result of it, you will get two times length into two times breadth into two times height, which would be eight times LBH, right? The new volume will now become eight times LBH, okay? And thus, we know that LBH is nothing but V. And thus, if you multiply this by density, you get a volume into density into eight, which is nothing but eight times mass. Thus, if you have an adapter whose length, breadth, and depth, okay, uh, thickness is being increased twice or it is being increased doubled, in that case, you observe the weight of this adapter becomes eight times and not two times, right? Okay, this is the concept that we are going to follow. This concept has been in invariably practiced in many branches of physics. But unfortunately, most of the students do mistakes in these concepts. The reason is because they just look at only one dimension. Now, I have just given an example of a one dimension, okay, only along the x axis or y axis. While, okay, you can also have similar examples, counter examples in various branches in physics. You can have examples in case of distances, velocities, accelerations, resistances, magnetic fields, whatever parameter you have. The moment you say, I have a parameter, it could depend on all this also, okay? So therefore, now we need to look at all this and that's what we are going to look into it. Okay, so now let me begin with the example. So first, let me share my PPT. Just a moment. Okay. Right. So there are so many examples which I could cite over here. Please have a look at it. Some of them could pertain to very easier way, like your ninth and 10th grade. Some of them could be much higher. It could also be something like 
uh, at a higher grade, maybe around 11th and 12th, uh, JE mains, okay, and so on. But I felt that this concept is extremely important for all the students, especially when you have such kinds of problems. This, this kind of concept appears in every branch of science. It's not only in physics, every branch of science. Now, towards it, let us understand this, this kind of problems from the logical way. Okay, I have described one problem here, which tells you two balls of different masses are being dropped from the top of a tall building one after the other. So what you do is you have a tall building. This is the ground. And from here, you are going to drop two balls. First, you drop one ball. And then after some time, the moment you drop one of them, then you drop the second one. Okay, so when you drop the first ball, first ball came here. Maybe when it came here, you drop the second ball. The distance between the balls, the distance between the balls. What will happen to the distance between the balls? Will the distance between the balls increases with time? Or does it depend only on the initial velocity? Does it remain constant? Does it depend on mass of the balls? Excuse me. Right. So towards it, the answer most of the students gave to me is the distance remain a constant because, you know, the moment I am going to drop it, the gravity is going to act on both of them. And fortunately, when the gravity and the same force is acting on it, then definitely there should not be any changes in distance. This is the reason I got. The second reason I got is maybe, sir, you are throwing this one with a much higher velocity, this much at a lower velocity. And in that case, distance might differ. You should tell us that. Then I said that, see, read the question once again. Two balls of different masses, masses could be different, are dropped from the top of a tall building one after the other. Okay. Now you say it has been dropped. Okay. When you say drop, then what can happen? The drop, which means that the initial velocity is zero. You are not increasing the velocity, right? So therefore, so in such cases, uh, so it is the same velocity which you are going to drop. So definitely, okay, it does not depend upon the initial velocity, right? So now what is the answer? So this answer is said that is the distance remains a constant, but this is incorrect. This is incorrect. Now let us look at one more thing. And some of them also gave an answer as depends upon the mass of the balls. So why? The reason is because they said that, sir, you said there are two different masses. One mass is much larger, one mass is lower. Then what can happen is one mass can come faster, the other mass can come slower. I said that, okay, they're all point masses. Okay. And do you think that the time of fall depends upon the mass? See, so many misconceptions, so many things which people do not do, do get an incorrect way of understanding. Okay. So definitely the time of fall does not depend upon the mass. Okay. Time of fall depends only on the height of the object. Maybe if you want, I can put it across into one more video as why it does not depend on it. But currently this is something which is a very basic thing, which you would have learned. In fact, the Galileo's experiments also suggested the same thing. The one which you did it from the leaning tower of Pisa, the same experiment. Okay. You would have seen it. Okay, now let us answer the question. Distance between the balls. What happens to the distance between the balls? So definitely it does not depend upon the mass of the ball. It does not depend on the, what you call it, on the initial velocity because both of them are thrown with the same velocity. Then they said the increases with time they are not able to get into. And they said that it remains constant is the right answer. But this remains constant is also an incorrect answer. Let me explain why it is not so. So towards it. The first thing, you see, when you talk about science, and even if there are no values given, you can always assume something, right? Without assumption, you will not be able to prove your hypothesis or you will not be able to claim what you have mentioned only. So therefore, now let me assume that the height of the building is H. He has not given you. It could be 300 meters, 800 meters, whatever it is. Let me assume the height of the building is H. Now, if a particle, if a ball has to start from here and to keep on coming over here. Now, let us say it has traveled a distance of this much. What do we call this as? Let us say some y. Let me say it's y. Now, what is, uh, how do you relate this y with respect to the time taken? It has taken a time taken t, it has taken a time t, the first ball has taken a time t to start from here and to reach over here. How do you relate these two? Very simple. Choose this as your y x axis. Just choose this as your y axis, right? And then you will say that, okay, anything which goes downwards is positive. Or maybe if you want to take negative, take it as negative, take a negative. And this is uh, positive over here. So in that case, I'll write minus y is equal to uy. What is uy? The initial velocity which you drop. What is the dropping velocity? Zero. You just had something in hand. You just had something in hand. You just lifted your fingers. Just let it free. So therefore, your initial velocity is zero. Zero into t plus half into what is a? a is nothing but acceleration due to gravity. What is the direction of this vector? Downwards. So I'll write this as minus g multiplied by time taken, which is t squared. 
right? So in other words, I can now write y is equal to half gt squared. Half gt squared. Let me call for time being, since I am doing it for the first ball, it has reached here. I'll call this as y1 over here. Uh, y1 is equal to half g into t squared. This is what we have got here. Next, what we do is let us consider the second ball. The second ball was also dropped, okay, after a certain instant of time. So let the time, let the displacement of the particle at a given instant of time be y2, y2 over here. What is y2? This distance is y2. So y2 should now once again be equal to half g into t squared once again, okay. And now, if I take the displacement, no, once again, is the T one and the same? T is not one and the same because you dropped first something and then second ball was dropped one instant later on, right? So therefore, I will do one thing. I will consider that the second ball was dropped after one second. You can always assume, okay? When no data is given, if you want to get an understanding, you can always assume, which means if this has taken T seconds to fall, this would have taken T minus one seconds to fall. T minus one, one second later on I have drop it, right? T plus one means, say, for example, if this has taken five seconds, this has taken only four seconds. From the four seconds, what is the distance value? Okay. Now, if I take y2 minus y1 or y1 minus y2, this will be lesser, this will be higher. y1 minus y2. What will y1 minus y2 be? See, y1. What is y1? So, this is, I will write it because here it is so much clumps over here. So, what I will do is, I'll, this is the building and uh, this is the distance y1. This is the y1 here. And in the same time, the next instant of time, y2 is this one. Now, what is y1 minus y2? This distance, right? y1 minus y2 is this one. See, if I add this value, this plus this is equal to this one, right? y1 minus y2 plus y2 will be equal to y1 only, right? So, therefore, this is your distance. Now, y1 minus y2, this distance, now what I will do is y1, I know the answer, which is nothing but equal to half g into t square minus half g into t minus 1 the whole square. Okay, why am I doing this? Be clear, just wait. So this should be half g into t square minus of t minus 1 the whole square. Uh, this should be half g into, let us expand this, t square minus t square minus 1 plus 2t. How do we get this? This one what I have done is I have just taken t square plus 1 minus 2t, a minus b whole square. I have done this. So this goes away. And thus, I get the answer as g by 2 into 2t two minus 1. Okay, just don't look at the video. You need to practice it along with me. Only then you will get it. Okay, now, what have we got here? We y1 minus y2 is equal to g by 2 into 2t two minus 1. What does it tell you? This y1 minus y2 is now dependent on the time here, right? Which means when the time increases, for which time I have taken? Let us say if I put t equal to 5 seconds. Okay, 5 seconds the particle was here. Okay, four seconds the particle was here, then the second particle is here. So this is your second particle, this is the second ball, and this is your first ball, first ball over here. Okay, so therefore the distance between them is equal to g by 2 into 2t two minus 1. Now, after six seconds, where is the particle? After six seconds, y1 minus y2 would now be equal to g by 2 into 2 into 6, 12 minus 1, 11. Which means what? Now it is dependent on time over here, right? As the time increases, y1 minus y2 will also increase. Why does it increase? Because you see, these two are proportional to each other, right? If you want, I can expand this and I can write this as gt minus g by 2. So it is now proportional directly to time. That means when the time increases, the distance between the two balls also increases, right? Okay, so therefore, which is the right answer? It increases with the time. So, option A is the right answer. Okay. I hope you have understood this particular concept. So, this particular concept just detailed about how you can compare between any two distances or any two parameters. Thank you, friends, for watching this video and being with me throughout the video. If you like this video, do share, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more updates. And share it with your friends so that it reaches by and far. And of course, it's absolutely free, free, free. Okay, thank you.